If your mom or your dad or your grandma or any of the boomers are asking how they can protect themselves against scammers, then just show them this video. This video might be common sense to a lot of people, but I guess it's more like a PSA for the older generation and also a refresher for the younger generations. I probably should have released this video before the holidays, but holidays are usually scammer season, which means we get a spike in phishing attacks across the board. So in this video, I'll run through the best methods on preventing yourself from losing those precious dollars that we desperately need need in this economy. First things first, if you get one of these text messages, then stop and don't do anything else. I don't want to scare you guys too much, but the first thing you need to do is check the website link. Ignore all the garbage in the text telling you that you need to pay some money or pick up delivery. You need to look at the actual website and see if it looks suspicious. If any of your spider senses tingle when you look at the website, then there's a good chance it's a scam. So in this text message here, we can see that it has linked, which is basically a company that allows us to pay our toll on the road. What you need to do is spend an extra 10 seconds and google the company's name from there you can easily see the legitimate website this is probably one of the best ways or easiest way to identify a scam text message now the reason why i'm saying to ignore all the content of the message is because of one thing urgency this is probably the most overlooked but the most effective way a scammer can get you they will create a sense of urgency in a way that says you have to pay immediately or your account will be closed or click on this link right now to get your delivery. All of this is just a facade to get you feel panicky and turn off your brain. So after you've checked that the website doesn't look legit, then just delete it and get on with your day. If it's a legit text message, then they'll probably send a reminder anyway, so don't stress too much. The next thing we gotta cover is those scam emails. Now the same logic applies here. You'll probably see a very catchy and urgent subject for the email, and then that'll make you want to click on it. Just so you guys know, it's fine if you click on the email in your mailbox to open it, but make sure not to click on anything else inside. Right away, just glance at how they're addressing you in the email. If they just say like, hi or hello customer, then you know straight away that's a red flag. Also, while you're checking this, look for spelling mistakes because a lot of these scammers are illiterate, so they're super easy to spot. Now, usually that's enough to just go ahead and delete the email. And I would advise that you do. What you have to realize is if an email is legitimate, then there's a good chance that they will send a follow-up email anyway. So don't worry about deleting an email thinking that it's gone forever. All right, so if you want to look for more red flags to confirm the legitimacy, then look at the sender's email. There's a very high chance that it'll look like rubbish with a bunch of jumbled up letters and numbers. This is so they can create multiple accounts to spam to a lot of people. These are pretty easy to spot as well and are usually the final red flag for me to delete the email. The next thing to do for the scam emails is the same drill, just ignore all the rubbish text and check for websites. That's because they can hide the website underneath another text or disguise as a legitimate website. I only recommend you doing this on a computer. If you do it on your phone, then you might accidentally click on the website and that's gonna be bad. So when you're on the computer, you can either hover on the hyperlink and it will show you what the website is underneath the text. Or just copy the link and paste it onto a notepad. What I usually do is go on virustotal.com and drop the website there and do a scan. So what virustotal does is it will look at the other virus scan databases to see if they get any positive hits. Recently, I've encountered an increase in a new way that these scammers are trying out, and that's QR codes. Okay, not really a new way, but that's just what I've been seeing in my mailboxes. Basically, QR code scams are when they will send a QR code as an image, so it bypasses the initial scans from Microsoft. Never scan these QR codes unless you're expecting them. What you can do is take a screenshot and save it into a folder, and then upload that screenshot into a QR code decoder website and it'll reveal the website. Then do the same thing and throw it into virus total and scan it. The last thing to mention is this type of emails. On the surface, it looks normal to the average person, but this entire email is an image. So same thing when you're on the computer, hover on the image and you'll see the website pop up. Just right click and select copy link and do a virus scan on it. From my observation, it's way easier to be scammed on your phone than on your computer. Mostly because it's more likely that a person will have a phone than a computer. And a computer allows more flexibility to check on the content of an email. I will go as far as to say if an email makes you suspicious or even gives off a little red flag, then just don't open it. If it's a bank email, just call the bank. A surprise delivery message even though you didn't buy anything, just ignore it. The next thing we gotta talk about are scam calls. To be honest, I don't really pick up calls. 
I have the feature turned on for silencing unknown callers for my personal phone which sends them straight to my voicemail. Okay, I know that might not be possible for some of you guys, but hear me out. If you know someone, then there's a good chance they're already in your contacts, so if you silence unknown callers, the calls from your contacts will still come through. That's one layer of safety which eliminates 99% of the scam calls already. And once those voicemails come through, you can just easily tell that it's a scam or not. Most scam calls are robots anyway, so they would have that kind of AI generated voice, so it's pretty straightforward. Now for the ones that goes to the voicemail and sends you a text message, just follow the same steps from what we talked about before and life is easy. Now I know for a fact that healthcare workers might not be able to avoid calls because they might need to receive calls from their patients. Then there's not much you can do besides being extra vigilant on what the caller is telling you. Okay, so everything we have talked about is being reactive. Let's talk about how we can be proactive in protecting ourselves. The main goal of these scammers is to either get your money or hack into your accounts to get your money. The best way to counter this is to put as many roadblocks in between this process as possible. The first thing we need to do is to have two-factor authentication. Now that might sound complicated to you, but it's actually very simple. You might have even experienced it when you're trying to log into a website and they send you a code to your phone. This essentially is what a two-factor authentication is. It requires you to authenticate on another platform in case your password has been compromised. This is the most common and effective way to protect yourself against 99% of the scams and hacks. If you haven't done so already, go on all the apps that you use, especially the ones on a daily basis and turn on two-factor authentication for everything. Majority of the apps can be turned on in the settings page and if you have phone number or email registered. Occasionally, they might require an authenticator app that is independent to your phone number or email. I personally use Microsoft Authenticator app and in my opinion, I think it's safer too. That's because the code changes every 30 seconds, so you only have 30 seconds to enter in the code or else it expires. This is actually perfect against scammers as they'll never be able to get the code and even if they do, it'll only be useful for 30 seconds and it's gone. I've known a couple of people that had their social accounts hacked simply because they didn't have this turned on. And I've personally experienced an attempt on one of my social accounts, so I highly, highly recommend that you turn on two-factor authentications whenever, wherever you can. Okay, so that was quite a lot of information. Hope you guys were able to digest it. Scams are definitely growing in terms of complexity, especially with AI, deepfakes, voice cloning, scary stuff. Hey! You finished the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Since you made it this far, let's spend an extra 5 seconds to hit like and subscribe on the channel to show your support. It really goes a long way and it really helps. And if you didn't like the video, leave a comment down below to say why. Thanks for watching.